Hey guys, this is going to be part three of the three part build series on how to build a TV tray. So since the last video I've done a little bit of work which I'm going to get into here right now. Where I left off was after I had finally assembled this tray completely. But what I did since the last video was I leveled off the bottoms of it and I'm going to show you how to do that now. Alright, so what I have here is a piece of wood the same size as the legs just bolted on as a reference since I already did this. What your leg would normally look like sitting on the ground would be this angle right here. So in order to get the correct measurement to make the tray nice and flat, I like to save this to the end instead of cutting it beforehand in case you make some mistakes or a hole doesn't drill in perfectly. This just allows you to custom fit it for each specific tray in case you have minor modifications and you don't get into any issues. So what I use is a scrap piece of the same material I use for the legs. This one's three quarters of an inch thick. But what I do is I just set it, I set the tray on a flat surface, and then I set this piece right up to it perfectly. If you look at it from the back, it matches up with this angle perfectly with the edge of the piece of wood. And all I do is I put it up there and I draw a line straight across it. On all four pieces, going all the way around. That way I know exactly where to cut it down to. Now what I like to use this for is I like to use a saw in order to cut it down but then I finish it off by sanding it down to get it exactly perfect the way I want it. As you can see with the line it's going to line up right where we want it and will be perfect all the way around. Alright so this next step is not necessary but I'm a little picky when it comes to how my finish on the products look. As I said earlier, the wood that I got was actually two different size thicknesses. I tried to get down as best I could to meet up without having any issues. But what I like to do is I like to sand all this down so that the legs and these side pieces are at the exact same height. So in doing that, it will give you a nice clean finish and it will look like everything was set up perfect. Alright, so one thing I forgot to mention was one way that I figure out when everything is set up perfectly is to put marks all the way down my project as you can see right here. And that helps me to know when all those lines are completely gone then I have the two pieces at the same thickness or extremely close to the same thickness Alright, so now that I got them all sanded down, next what I'm going to do is flip the legs over to the other side and do the exact same thing, making sure that everything is perfect all the way throughout. It's nice and smooth and even. So now that we have the legs all matching up, now all we need to do is disassemble the entire piece and sand everything down to a finished sand before we start the stain. Make sure that you keep all your parts together so that you don't have to go back to the store and buy more because you can't find it in your garage somewhere. Find the right words, and there's no way this is real life. There's no telling you're the right girl, so I can only say that it feels right. It feels right. It feels right. All right, so now that I've completely wiped everything off with a blue shop towel to make sure that all the sawdust is off, I'm going to start applying the stain now. I'm just going to be using a nice rag and some golden oak stain to get the required finish that I'm looking for.
So all I'm doing for this project is just dipping it in the stain and just rubbing it on. Making sure that I get down in all the little nooks and crannies. I don't want to let this stuff soak on too much just because of the color that I'm going for. So I'm strictly just going to be wiping it on and then basically wiping it right off. Alright, so now that I have all the pieces stained, I'm going to let them dry overnight. Once the stain is fully dry, then I will start applying the polyurethane finish. Alright, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some Minwax Wood Putty. The color that I'm using actually matches the color of the stain so it will blend in very well. All I'm going to be doing is filling in some of these very very minute little cracks in the wood to give it the best possible finish that I can. This stuff is very easy to use. It's a nice soft little putty. You just pull some out on your finger and rub it into the cracks. This is just a must. Put me in perspective. I'm the deepest in the cut. Everybody tuning in, but this is just for us now. We know I ain't ballin' yet. Hoes wanna holler? Oh no, I don't call them back, girl. Let me see you hold it down. We gon' have a blast. Cause I just wanna know what you got. All right. So what I'm gonna use to apply the polyurethane is gonna be cotton rags. You can use an old T-shirt. I have a bag of them from Home Depot that I bought. I think they were like eight bucks. So. All I'm going to do is I'm going to pour on the wipe on poly and using the nice thick side that I folded up I'll be able to spread it out with it absorbing into the rag giving me an even spread and a smooth finish. So first you're going to just want to put a decent amount on because your rag is just going to soak it on up. And then you want to just start going with the grain. Now I'm going to start on the bottom first. That way the base of it will have time to dry so that when I flip it over I'll be able to set it down without damaging anything on the bottom as far as the finish goes. And since you have a nice wet rag, you'll be able to squeeze down into the little cracks very easily. You get a nice smooth finish. Alright, so now that I have two coats of the wipe on polyurethane on all the pieces of the tray, that'll help me give the tray a nice smooth surface by filling in the grains nice and flat and sealing them off so that when I start using thicker polyurethane I don't get real uneven spots. So my next step is going to be using 320 grit sandpaper and I use a nice wooden block and I'm just going to lightly just brush over the top to get any high spots off from using the polyurethane the first couple times and the wood grain rising up. You're not applying very much pressure on there, just enough to knock off the high spots. After you're finished sanding, you want to follow up with a blue shop towel to make sure you get off all the white dust from the polyurethane that was sanded off.
For the next part I'm going to use Minwax Fast Drying Polyurethane with clear gloss. I'm going to end up putting about three coats on top and then two on the bottom just to ensure that the top has a little bit more protection for the plate sliding across it because this is going to see more action than a normal piece of furniture. Do with all of that, I ain't gotta say a word. I know what's up. You can have it all. Watch me rip it off. I'll admit it. You got me feeling hella love. Even when it's going down, know that we gon' live it up. Young shot caller. Always been a baller. Know that you the one. I can feel it in my heart. Yeah, I won't stop charging. We going come harder. I can see you and I way beyond the stars, girl. I can never ever find the right words. And there's no way this is real life. There's no telling you're the right girl So I can only say that it feels right It feels right It feels right Alright, so now that I've got the tray all finished up and partially put back together in a temporary state one thing I'm going to do to prevent any scratching on the floors or anything like that is I'm going to use half inch felt strips to put on the bottom of each leg that will allow it to slide nice without having any gouges in the ground. So applying the felt strips is just as easy as it can get. It has a double sided tape on the back side of it. All you have to do is peel off the plastic on it and attach it to the bottom of the leg. I prefer using the half inch when it comes to the bases just because if you use the three quarter inch when it flattens down you could have some overhang it just doesn't look as nice. The half inch I feel like it looks nice and it's hardly noticeable when you're actually using the tray. So another step that I like to do when it comes to reassembling the tray for the final time is I like to use some thread locker right here I got the thread locker blue 242 just to put on the threads to ensure that the tray is not going to loosen up over time it'll help hold it nice and tight